So at this point we've seen the general concept of the app that we're trying to develop. We're seeing my example here and we've broken down the concepts of what the screens will look like. And now it's a matter of starting to go toward that goal. And as I said, we're going to work together. I'm going to be lecturing toward this goal. You may have a different idea for what kind of app you want to create, and you can do so, but I would recommend do it in parallel. That is, I'm going to be working toward this project, and you could be working on your own project, sure, but if you only work on your project, you might be lost because I'm going to be talking about this project. So as we saw when I showed the examples of student work, everyone created this kind of app and they customized it to their own style and, and functionality as they wanted, but everyone's app is going to be similar. And then eventually you're going to take these concepts and hopefully expand upon them. But this is our goal here. So in order to create the interface for this project, we're going to use this tool that will help us quickly create uh, the interface and the buttons and all of that. Because we could, again, start over and write from scratch uh, HTML and section, data role, all of that. What we're going to do is use this rapid prototyping tool. And there's many of them out there. Here's one that I've found that I like. And I'll tell you its pros and cons. Let's go to this website codiqa.com codica.com Actually, I've never heard it pronounced by the official developer, so I don't know if it's, called, it's pronounced Kodika, Kodika, I don't know, I say it Kodika. So go ahead and go to codica.com Notice you'll see Kodika, you might search Kodika competitors, comparisons. Kodika.com. This is one of many uh, tools out there to build a jQuery mobile app, the easy way. This is going to be a, uh, an app, a project that is drag and drop, create this interface, and then you'll get all the code, and then we'll continue to refine it, because this will not complete our app. This will be yet another starting point. Instead of writing it all from the beginning, this will get us started. So, build jQuery mobile apps. Kodika is a powerful drag and drop builder for creating cross platform HTML5 mobile apps and websites. It's simple to use and so darn useful. What? <coughs> Say that again? Not as powerful as an IDE. No, it's really just focusing on creating your interface, whereas an IDE is usually for all aspects of an app. This is not really going to deal with any of the complex stuff like the JavaScript, databases, and that stuff. What? Well, an IDE is just an app uh, or a software that really focuses, focuses on all aspects of creating an app, like the database and writing all, editing all of the code and debugging it and all that complicated stuff. This is just for creating the interface. So you can read here that it's being used by these reputable brands. And you get a preview of it. It looks something like this, where you're going to see these various components or widgets. And you drag them into place. And you set their options over here. And you'll be able to edit the code to some degree. And then <coughs> even better, you'll be able to download the code and continue to edit it in Notepad or Eclipse or whatever you like to use to edit build code deploy, build run once everywhere. It costs bucks. Yes, I'm getting to that. So we're going to connect to the service. <laughs> we're going to connect to the services you love, share, save, and edit. Real-time visual code editor, so we'll be able to edit our, our code right in the project. And the thing about it is that this is a great tool, but sometimes great tools are not free. So this and the other competitors are also going to be not for free. They're going to vary in price and features and quality and so forth. This is the one that I felt would be the best 
to, uh, to use in a class. And what's cool is that we have two ways to use it. We have the web version, which is that we create an account um, and from any computer then we can log in and work on our project. The other way is to download the app and it installs on your computer and therefore obviously you can only use it on the computer you installed it to. Now the pricing varies. I'm going to take a quick look at pricing although there is a big advertisement up here free for seven days that might be all that we need that might be all that we need in the beginning because we're not going to spend a lot of time with Codica. We're going to design our general interface. We have an idea of what we want to do with an interface. So we'll design the interface, download our code, and then continue to work on it in Notepad. But it's free for seven days, and you have either download the, the desktop version or get the web version. And yeah, it's $79. But it's $79 for the license, not yearly, not monthly, one time cost of $79. <coughs> Compared to other software, does anyone know how much Photoshop costs? $299. You must be thinking about the student just, price. <laughs> just the one. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So more in the range of $500 for the full featured one and even more with for more of the Adobe products. So Photoshop and Flash and Dreamweaver and all of that, that's the super expensive. $500, $900. Depending on your student credentials and such, you might get discounts, but that software is expensive. This one, $79, one time cost, yeah, it's $79, but it's you'll be able to make as many apps as you want with it. Uh, there's another, something similar to this that we'll look at later, um, which has some limitations, like you can only make one app at a time, one user at a time. This is one of the best ones that I've seen that has the most features. It's going to use jQuery Mobile, just like we've been talking about, because there's other ways to do this. There, there's, like I've mentioned, Sencha, there's um, Ionic. S-E-C-H-A. What's that one? Sencha. Sencha, yeah. S-E-N-C-H-A, Sencha. And there's other ones. But uh, jQuery Mobile seems to be one of the big ones. We can export store, store files locally. Adobe uses it. Oracle uses it. Now, I don't, I'm not related to the project. I don't get a kickback from recommending it. But I like to recommend it because it is useful for, for students. Let's uh, take a quick look over on over on, uh, if we go back to the home page, go back to the home page and click try the demo. So go back to the Kodika home page and click try the demo. So this is going to load up a preview of, of the Kodika software. Welcome to Kodika. Start the demo. Here we have a mobile device mock-up. We have some buttons, some elements. Uh, you can select a particular element or component like that text or this over here and then you might see some some options on the right side that you can edit. <coughs> If you want like a side panel or a button, you just drag it over. It has options. So this is in general what the Kodika editor is. It's a way just to quickly create an interface. The complicated stuff we'll still need to do in Notepad. Um, this gets better all the time. I've been using it for a few years now. Recently they were bought by Ionic, one of the other big names in the world of, of mobile app design. So that'll probably improve Kodika. Um, I wouldn't worry about buying it yet if you're going to buy it because um, you can actually also get in contact with them. There's a tech support or something somewhere. You can tell them, I'm a student. Do you offer a student discount? And they do have a student discount. So you might be able to save on that. 
either some free some some months for free or a lower price. But yeah, it's it's not a free software, and that's why we saw that there was the suggestion Kodika competitors. You can do some research and find out what other ones are out there. And uh, there might be better, they might be worse. I don't know. I, when I did the research, this is the best one that I saw. Maybe the other competitors have gotten better. Maybe better price also. But I'm going to be talking about using Kodika. We're going to use the free version of it just to create an interface. And actually, as we saw somewhere here, we can download the seven day free trial which is nice. But here's what we're going to do. Um, it used to be that if you try the demo <coughs> and you created an interface, you have the button at the very top over here, download. You would click download and then it would let you download the code. Now it says thanks for trying the free one, pay up. So that's another incentive, ignore. You can click on the bottom right and see code here, and it'll show you most of the code. It doesn't show you the basic HTML code, right? It doesn't show you the, the doc type and the head and the body and those kinds of tags, but this is showing you what's inside of the main section. And notice it's not using the section and header, that idiom. It's not using those semantic elements. Um, so, But we are seeing div data role page div data role content so you could work and copy and paste this into notepad although if you just copy it as is it will not work because uh, as i'm saying it's missing the doc type it's missing the html tags it's missing the head tag and the body tag which is not so complicated for you to write but i'm going to show you this instead i reached out to the kodika developers um, maybe two semesters ago, when I was setting up the class, uh, I, we would use this and we would start our project and download it and continue. Then they changed it. So I reached out to them and I said, hey, I'm an instructor and I teach this class and I'm recommending Kodika, but do you have a, a student demo version that, that we can use? And they, they, uh, they tweeted me, yes, use this link. So let me show you this link for the free, totally free version that does not expire that we can use as students. Um, I don't have the address memorized, but we'll go over to, let's go to delicious.com slash vmcampus. Raise your hand if you've heard of delicious.com before. A few people. Delicious.com is a website where you can save your bookmarks. So as you're browsing the web on your own home computer, you find a cool link, you add it to your bookmarks or your favorites, and then you come to class and you want to show me the bookmark, but you left it on your home computer. Well, with a free Delicious account, you can save your bookmarks to Delicious and then access them from any computer. So save your bookmarks there, and then you go to your friend's house and show them the link. So here's my Delicious account, delicious.com slash vmcampos. Got a bunch of links there that might be useful, 404 links. You want to scroll down, they're, they're dated. They have a date on the right. You want to scroll down to January 2014. So scroll down to January 2014, January 15th, 2014, and you'll find the link Kodika Prototypes. Not too many people know about it. The stat tells you how many others have saved the link. Not too many people know about that. But anyway, scroll down, January 15th, 2014, Kodika Prototypes, click on it, and there's the address, kodika.com slash embed slash editor. This is the version that you can create in the project, and at the top right you will see download HTML, and it'll give you the full HTML. We're going to work on this in a moment. I just want to make sure we're all in the same place. Did everyone find the link on my delicious bookmarks? <laughs> yeah, we're all accessing it, so it might be slow. So everyone click on the Kodika Prototypes link. How do you reach the bookmarks? 
Uh, you go to delicious.com slash vmcampos, and those are all the bookmarks. Now on caveat before we move on, it seems that the Kodika site doesn't quite work if you're using Internet Explorer. Before we go further, uh, switch over to another browser if you're using Internet Explorer because it's happened a few times that we are working and then we get to the part about downloading our work and on Internet Explorer there's no download button. So, waste of time. Uh, I'm not sure, actually I haven't checked it today. I should have checked before I mentioned it. Okay, they might have updated the Internet Explorer finally uh, on our campus. So if you do see it, never mind. but another uh, caveat. This is not permanent, as in if I drag these icons and start to make my interface and whatever, and then I get distracted and I go over to jQueryMobile.com to look up something in the instructions, um, maybe an icon or whatever, and then I go back to Kodika, oops, I lost it all. So this is not gonna save anything. It's the free version, it's the secret version, it doesn't save your work. It's gonna, you're going to lose it if you navigate to another site, you're going to lose it if you reload the page. So we're going to use it to create our interface. We're not going to go in very deeply to create the interface and write every bit of content. It's like walking on eggshells. I want to create the content, the screens, right? And then download the code and save it in Notepad to our flash drive where it'll be safe. So our workflow here is basically we're just going to drag and drop these elements into the, the window here. And we're going to... We're going to download it. So based on my notes here, Interface A, I want to create a header section, a content section, a footer section. <coughs> so drag the header component from the top over here to the top of your project. Notice when you drop it in, you have a few options here, theme, fixed mode. Notice fixed mode is no. By default, you might want to set that to yes. What does fixed mode do again? It keeps the header at the top so that it doesn't scroll away when you scroll down. I want to create a nav bar with three buttons. So it's not very obvious, but this is how you do it. You have a button that says nav bar here. You're going to drag it, but be careful here. If you drag it over here, it's going to be detached from the header. It's going to have a little bit of empty space. I want to drag it right here so that it's in the header so that it doesn't take up extra space. Drag and drop. It'll say button. Well, I want three buttons. That does not mean drag three more of these. That means on the right side here, I have one button, add a new button, add a new button. See that? I dragged the navbar component into the header. And then I added the extra buttons with the options over here. View button. I'm going to do three because I figured out that I'm going to have the three main screens. You may have more. That's fine. I'm going to do three. Well, again, what I did was I dragged the nav bar. You, you don't click it. You drag it into place. And then when you get one button here, on the right side, you're going to add two new buttons. All three of the buttons are called button. How do I change it for it 
how do I change it to say home, art, and computers? Well, if you have the component selected, you can select the different components. Select a component. And then you have the options for each particular item. So notice we've got the text of the button. I'll explain what initially active is and these other ones in just a moment. But the options for this button, I'm going to set that to home. Notice now it says home. I will set the text for the second button, art. This is the art classes button. And then computers. So I'm editing the text of each of the buttons. Home art computers. So again, I'll get back to what initially active is in just a moment. Link to home page. Ignore that. We have the free version of Kodika. This does not work. But if we had the paid version from here, we would be able to link this button to this page. This free version will not allow us to create more than one page. We're only going to have one page. So what we'll use this Kodika prototype is to basically take all of the components and code and download it, and then we'll still have to manually create the different pages. Again, it's the free tool. Maybe you'll find it better to actually use the demo and copy and paste the code, but this will still give us a lot of the, the work done for us. So don't worry about link default theme. Don't worry about that. Leave that. Icon. You can set some icons here. So computers, I'm going to use gear. You can use any icons you want, but I'm going to go with gear for computers, for art. I'm going to go with um, the star. And for home, we've got a home icon. Notice at the top, icon position, we can say put the icons at the bottom or on the side. If you put them on the side, they take up less space, and therefore you can have more content in the body. But if they're too small, they're a little harder to hit. Have you ever used an app where you're tapping the icon and it doesn't behave, or it doesn't respond because finger, your finger's too big? If your button is too small, that's bad user interface design. So I would say either the top or the bottom, whichever you like. Notice the options here also are transition. Don't worry about that just yet. We won't really be able to see what it looks like. But under transition, we would be able to select the animation that happens between screens. So we'll leave the fade for the moment, because we can't really get a sense out of what these look like. We do have a button at the top to test it, but it won't quite work. <coughs> On your home button, let's select that one as initially active yes. And you should see that what initially active yes does is it highlights a button. This is part of good user interface design. There's an art and a science to making a good app, a good website. Uh, you want to make it as easy as possible for your user to use your app. Even though we may have been visiting websites or using apps for a long time, the theory is that whenever someone visits your website or uses your app for the first time, they are a newbie. They are new to it. They have to learn how to use your app. And there's a lot of paradigms that have become standardized and universal to a point, such as, would it make any sense to use the home icon for anything besides home? It wouldn't make sense to use the home icon to send an email. That's how maybe we have the little envelope, even though that's a physical envelope and not an email, which is, of course, virtual. So what I'm getting at is, with for good user interface here, 
um, user interface design, we don't want to confuse the user as to what screen they're looking at. At a glance, we want people to know, I'm on the home screen. I'm on the computer's screen. I'm sending an email. We want to give visual clues. And one way to do that is simply highlighting the button where the user is currently at. If none of these buttons were highlighted, a person would not be able to tell which of these screens am I on. Also because I don't have any other clues. Header still says header instead of home. So I'm going to say, let's set our initially active of home to yes, just because I want to see what that code looks like. In Notepad, we'll get into it deeper. But if you take a quick look at the code, there's some CSS going on here that shows that visible, visibly. I'm using Codica. Basically, I'm borrowing their widgets in a drag-and-drop way because I want that code. And it might not be the complete code, but this is going to save me effort of me typing it manually. It's going to free me up to make my app instead of, did I write that tag correctly? Did I misspell something? Did I use it correctly? The content section is pretty much automatic. It's this section already. We need a footer section or a footer widget. So drag the footer and be careful here. Don't put your footer in your header. Make sure you clear the header. Make sure you're putting it down here. Footer. Notice that one has a theme, don't worry there. Fixed mode, yes. ID and class. So getting back here, I have some text that I want visible first, and then stuff. So we've got the heading widget. I want to drag the heading into the content area. I'm going to drag an image placeholder below heading. This map is kind of cool, but it's not that useful. It's a static map. You, you give it an address and it'll show a map. But it's, it's not a draggable map, it's not a zoomable map, and it won't work with the kind of map that we're going to use later. So I'm going to skip the map. This map, I, it's not that useful. You can use it if you want, but I'm going to skip it. This is uh, kind of enough content for my home screen, but as I said, we're not going to be able to create a home screen here and then the PC screen and the, and the art screen. So what we're going to do here is we are, however, going to take the, the different widgets and put them onto this screen just because I need that code. And then in Notepad, we'll be able to create the separate screens and use the code appropriately. So what I mean is, based on the example project in the art screen I've got if someone wants to see the art class content they can click and that opens up and that's a collapsible component so let's drag a collapsible component Yes, but that's what I'm saying. We will, we will not be able to create another page. We're just going to take this code and then we're going to use it in Notepad. So just drag collapsible. And the way this works is it's got sections. There's a section and then content is below it. And then you can add a new section. Now the weird thing is that this shows it as collapsed no. I don't like that. What that means is when a person comes to your page, it'll automatically be open. I don't want that. I want them to be closed, and then the person will open it as necessary. They'll open the class that they want. So set your option here. Is collapsed? Yes. It's, it's closed. I want it to open once the user clicks on it. And I want to add three more sections. So on the right side here, we've got new section, new section. 
We will edit that text later. It's going to say section header, but it'll say something meaningful later. Uh, where? This one here? These section headers? Oh, I'm sorry, this is a picture. It's just a plain old image. I just dragged an image placeholder. In my example project, then, in the computer's screen, I have this kind of component where it's a, a list of links with these little dividers and then a button that will take you to another screen, and that one is the list view component. So I'm going to drag a list view. I'm going to drag it in and make sure it's outside of the other elements. You can put elements inside of elements. Be careful about that. Make sure you drag them so that they're outside. The way the list view works is you've got a divider and then some content. A divider and then a button. So notice what we've got there. So uh, based on my example, we want to add a few dividers and buttons. You can change the text if you want here, or we can do it in Notepad. I'll, I'll do it in Notepad. So what I want is a, an extra button and an extra divider. The reason we're doing all of this is you may think, well, this is cheating. This is doing it for us. I thought we were going to learn code. This is a starting point. This is not the whole complete project. I'm only taking parts of the code. Then I'm going to open it in Notepad, reverse engineer it, expand upon it. But this will give. This will be a time saver. Because again, you don't need to reinvent the wheel every time. So that thing is a divider. What is that? Collapsible. I'm sorry, list view. Okay. I'm going to add another component here. This one's kind of a little weird until we actually use it grid. The grid component is a way for you to, to divide up your screen. If you've used older versions of HTML, uh, you might uh, have used a table. A table is a way, uh, has been used as a way to divide up the screen to place different stuff in the top right corner, or the bottom center, whatever. But a table is not the best tool for the job. Uh, a table is designed to display a table of data, rows and columns of data. So in modern web design, we don't want to use a table for a, for a layout. It's highly uh, frowned upon. So we've got a component here that does that for the modern projects, a grid. And the way this works is I'm going to drag a grid component down here. And then on the right side it says, how many columns and how many rows do you want? For the moment I will set this to two columns and two rows because that will divide up my, my screen into four sections. And I can put something in each of these sections. Obviously I can add more if I want. I've skipped a few. I've skipped button. Don't worry about that. You can use it if you want. I won't just yet. I skipped link. Actually, I think that one's really dumb. I'm not going to use it. 
uh, map. We're going to do a better map. And then we've got a whole section at the top of form. Not forums. Form. I like to collect user input or to send an email and such. I'm not going to select any of these just yet. That'll be a little bit more advanced as time goes on. So I, I won't select any of these form components. What I'm doing is I'm just basically like I'm at a buffet and I'm loading my plate with everything because I don't want to come back to the buffet. I'm putting all of these pieces on my plate. We're going to download our code and then we're going to edit it in Notepad. So I've got all of these pieces. I filled my plate. At the top right, click Download HTML. Depending on your web browser, it may just download it right away, or you may get a pop-up that says Save or Open. You want to save it. What downloaded is a, is a zip file. Uh, this file called Kudika app dash whatever, some unique number, dot zip. Because this project includes an HTML file and a few supporting files. So it's zipped together for you to download. Did everyone manage to download their, their zip file? Before we can use it, then we have to extract it. Don't double click it. You need to right click it. So you want to find where that zip file went. Mine went to the desktop, yours probably also. <coughs> Open a computer window and go to the desktop. And then right click the zip file, extract all. It's going to ask you, where would you like to save this to? You can save it to your desktop or your flash drive. Better your flash drive so that you can take it with you. I'm going to save it to my... flash drive into a folder called this whole project I guess I forgot to say it around here the name of the project is going to be called my SDCE so this is going to be the unofficial SDCE app so I've got a folder here on my flash drive where I'm going to extract this zip file to. So it's being saved to my flash drive, into my Android folder, into a brand new folder I just created, my SDCE. Extract. And what we get is a folder called mobile website inside of that folder. And everything that this project is, is inside of that. And that we will edit in Notepad. What I want to do, just so that we're all on the right track, we need to, have, we need to be at this point, everyone, before we go on. So I'm going to take uh, one more break. Uh, we're going to make sure that everyone has created your basic project and downloaded it and saved it to your flash drive. And when we come back, we're then going to use Notepad to reverse engineer what, what did we just create. And then we're going to start to create the project that uh, is our goal. So at 7.30, let's do just a short one, five minutes. Let's do a five-minute break. When we come back, we will continue to work on our project.